Hi, my name is Kaylin Chong. Um, I am a current student and student ambassador at Georgetown's MSESM, which stands for um, Master of Science in Environment and Sustainability Management. Um, I'm originally from Taiwan, um, and I graduated college in 2017, and it's now um, sort of on a career path, uh, career change, and, and um, really trying to hone in on my passion for sustainability and how it merges with business and, and to invoke change um, through sustainability management. So I come from a PR and marketing background um, and throughout my career, I've noticed that a lot of brands are starting to align um, their brand values and, and you know their services and, and products with um, social impact um, strategies. And so that's ESG, CSR, what have you. And it, it really came to, I wanted to know how it, the changes can actually be done. And so I looked into um, sort of all the sustainability strategies and realizing that there is a gap in my expertise um, to understand the science and the business aspect of sustainability management. And so um, when, when I was looking into programs, I wanted something very specific that targets both the science part and the business aspect. And Georgetown was the perfect program. Um, yeah, and I, I applied, I visited, and, and I fell in love with DC and here I am. So um, the program has a lot of group projects and that is one of the ways that we are able to customize our learning experience. Um, so I'll name a couple for our introductory course. We looked at um, different materials um, and their global value chain. So my project was on sand. And so we evaluated, you know, how sand was extracted, what are the um, environmental, economic and, and um, equity issues associated with that. And then down like how it's been, uh, you know, refined, transported, and how it became products in, you know, everything we see in buildings, even glass and, and such. And so that was a very broad overview of everything sustainability related to, you know, raw materials. And it's so applicable to, um, it's applicable to, you know, a lot of the, the, the work that we do to understand the supply chain of things, the global value chain of things. And so um, I really appreciated that project and it, it sparked my interest in um, green building and sustainable real estate. Um, so that's one of the projects that I really enjoyed. Um, the other one I would say is uh, for our sustainable operations and supply chain class, um, we looked at Apple's circular economy strategies, um, particularly in their trade-in program. And so to look at, you know, what the program entails, what what's sort of been done about it and you know what are the challenges facing it and we identified that the biggest um, challenge is to get the products back from consumers and so we sort of came up with um, some suggestions you know how to better incentivize customers to to bring back their products to in to sort of maximize the the you know the circular economy um, aspect of that strategy, and um, that was really fulfilling. Like we actually get to look into a company that very well known brand, very successful, and and see how um, they're dealing with e waste and how that um, plays into their overall brand as well. So the same project, I I hadn't. When I looked into it, when we first got the briefs about the, you know, the different materials that we could be working on, I looked into it and sand is actually one of the fastest depleting resources um, on the planet. And like that is so surprising because we think, you know, we, we see when we go to a beach, there's sand everywhere. Why, why, why is the world running out of sand? Well, the reality is that we are extracting at a way faster rate, um, just like we do with most uh, resources out there. Um, and it's not replenishing fast enough. And also most sand that we see cannot be used into material. Um, so beach sands, it's it's the, the, the composition is not quite right. It cannot be used in cement or, you know, it's too coarse. It, it, the, the, the sand that can be used is very specific. And so therefore, you know, all of the buildings that, you know, all the materials glass that it requires a very specific kind of sand um, and that has limited resources and we are, really exploiting that resources without um, thinking about the repercussions and then um, having the right policy to mitigate that. Um, well, another surprising thing is just the, the, the lack of transparency and data with this entire supply chain. Um, there's a lot of equity issues associated with it um, and it's very complicated. I, I don't have time to explain it right now, but 
um, you know, it's a very sort of mysterious feel. And when we dug more into it, it's like, okay, this is a very big issue that impacts the communities around it. It impacts everybody's livelihood and, um, and, and obviously has a lot of its um, environmental impacts as well. Um, and so, yeah, that was a glimpse into all the different aspects of sustainability management that, um, that, that I could have a potential in, in um, making a change in. There are two classes that really stood out to me, um, and one is more the science side, and that is the class on climate impact and measurements taught by um, Professor Jesse Myler. Um, and it was like a half a semester class, is a very like intense sort of lowdown on on all the issues uh, surrounding climate change impact and measurements. And for someone that you know, I I came from a very Communications PR, like I, I, I study liberal arts in college, like science was, you know, sort of very distanced from me. And so that was a very quick way for me to just get all the information I needed to understand, you know, why 1.5 degrees, you know, is, is such a big deal. And um, what are the policies around it too? What are the different countries doing to mitigate their strategies? And so, um, um, so yeah, that was a very like introductory course, but it was, it was done in a way that it was easy for me to understand. I can get the gist of, you know, the important stuff and also be able to interpret a lot of these um, scientific um, findings and research and then apply that to um, business strategies late, later on. And um, so, yeah, I really appreciated that class. It was like a refresh on, on science and how the, you know, how the earth works, um, but which is really important in when and when I have now that I have this, this knowledge, um, I'm able to apply it to um, other courses um, when we're looking at broader um, sustainability strategies. So the other class I really enjoy is the business of sustainable energy and technology, um, taught by Professor Shafak Yujel. Um, and this class particularly um, is an extension of you know looking at different um, business strategies, business models um, of companies specializing in technology and in, in uh, specializing in energy and technology innovation. Um, and the professor is so interesting, like he's so knowledgeable in this in this domain. And so it's a case based model. So through different case studies, we get to look at different strategies of companies that are um, sort of spearheading all these new technologies. So it could be carbon, car uh, carbon capture, you know, how there's a company called Carbfix that is pumping um, CO2 into um, bath uh, into rocks and then basically storing them there forever. And that is so innovative, but also it comes with a lot of different challenges. You know, there's a very high um, upfront in like upfront investment, and you know the um, also the communication aspect of it. Like people need to know more about this technology and willing to adopt. And so we looked at different aspects of. Um, all of those challenges and and it's very insightful um and for us to think about how in the future you know when i want to consult on, on companies that that are looking into expanding their sustainability strategies and, and what what works and what didn't and what fits best um, for different companies and different industries Instead of having an internship built into the program, we have a capstone course where we are split into teams and work on, um, it's essentially a consulting project with um, real world clients helping to solve their real issues um, or you know problems within their strategies, what have you. Um, and so um, my group is working with Amazon and we're helping them to develop a framework, um, a decarbonization technology framework um, to sort of evaluate the different um, strategies, the, the, the different technologies that they could be implementing in, in um, their sustainability strategies. And so that is very exciting. Like it's not, it, it really will combine everything that I've learned in this class. And also it gives me the opportunity to network and, and build that connection with a very big company. And um, some of the other projects includes um, Department of Energy, um, Starbucks, uh, Blommer Chocolate, um, which and they're helping to look at their um, helping to communicate, you know, sustainable sourcing in, in chocolate, which um, so that's that was a very exciting time when we all found out which group we got placed in because it, it each project has has different objectives and whatever really speaks to to each of us. Um, I think we were able to get we will be able to get 
a lot of experience um, out of working um, on our capstone projects. So definitely, um, you know, I, I'm part of the generation that is very directly feeling the impact of climate change and is very worried about it, um, which is why a lot of us are um, aligning our values with sustainability and, and you know, sort of eco-friendly movements. Um, and so in the beginning, I was really freaked out. I'm like, oh my God, we need to, you know, ban all plastic. I need to conserve energy. I need to tell my, my, my family to do this and this. Um, but then realizing that there is a bigger underlying issue to all of it. And so I now have a more holistic view of um, certain issues. So uh, in terms of banning plastic, for example, you know, the government has only so much power to, to enforce these. It, it comes down to, you know, behavioral changes when, when plastic is a big problem, but also such a big and important part of our everyday lives. It exists in, you know, everything that we use, everything we touch, the food that we eat and, you know, how they get transported. Like, they're banning plastic will not solve that issue, um, but it's just how we can think about, you know, um, strategies of recycling, how we can, you know, upcycle or re re reuse these or even changing the materials of the plastic, making them more durable or, you know, easily break down. Um, and so I now have a much broader perspective and understanding the challenges of, of implementing these changes and, um, you know, the, the different aspects, like the financial aspects of it, like the feasibility, you know, how, how is this going to actually work in the, you know, in reality. Um, and so I think I'm a little calmer now when looking at these sustainability issues because I know the science is there um, and that there are strategies out there and I'm very hopeful um, for what we can do um, in terms of, you know, just trying to stop climate change. I think it's one of the mindset that I have to keep in mind that I kind of have to stay hopeful or else I, I sort of get into a spiral myself, you know, because we are feeling the, the the real effects of climate change you know the cherry blossoms came a month early in dc and that is kind of scary um for someone that understands the 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 bigger implications of that and um and i i can remain hopeful because the science is there um, and we learned that through class that we have the strategies to to make a bigger change and it really requires everything to go right, uh, so to speak. But I'm also hopeful because, um, especially in the US, um, you know, the Biden-Harris administration recently just passed the Inflation Reduction Act. And in there, there's a lot of investment, a lot of um, strategies going into scaling up renewable energy and, and facilitating that change. Um, worked on a project that looked at uh, offshore wind farms and there is a lot of money being put into that. And I see the real potential, you know, that it, it could generate like, I don't, I forgot the the, the entire amount of projected um, um, renewable energy generated, but it's it's worked in the in, in the UK um, and in, in, in Europe, okay, not specifically, it, it's, when wind farm has been very successful in other places around the world. And so, now that we have the resources and the government support to emulate that here in the U.S. and, and to, um, you know, start the energy transition process um, in the U.S. and I, it's investments are already starting to happen. Like we will start seeing more and more offshore wind farm popping up along the East Coast. And so I'm remaining hopeful. I think I, I think the expertise is there. I think it's the matter of getting the right investment in at the right time and, and convincing more people to um, believe um, in the changes that are necessary to um, sort of slow down climate change, uh, hopefully eventually mitigate it. I am on a career pivot, so to speak, um, but I do want to leverage my expertise in communications and, and public relations. And um, I'm exploring career paths in consulting, um, which is just gives me an opportunity to, you know, work with many different industries, different clients, and then, you know, help them shape their ESG or um, ESG st strategies. Um, and so that is a very exciting career path for me. Um, and so I'm 
consulting is definitely one thing that I'm, I'm, I can see myself in um, for the next five to ten years. Um, the other aspect, which I mentioned earlier, is like my interest in real estate and and um, green um, green buildings um, and sustainable um, development. And yeah, so kind of diverse paths, but um, I think that also just speaks to how sustainability exists in in virtually any industry and I have a lot of options and so um, yeah I want to explore these passions and just hopefully help make a difference. It's very exciting being the first uh, MSCSM cohort um, and what I really love about it is the cohort model. Um, so we, 45 of us, um, we represent like 20 different countries and you know so everybody comes from a very diverse background um, and with, you know, coming from different industries. So really the cohort, like we take every single class together and we are growing and learning as a cohort. Um, and every day in class, I'm learning something new from, from everyone. Um, and so I really appreciate the, the really like enriching conversation and discussions that we have in class. And because this really is an industry that requires a lot of collaboration and so, people bringing in different um, perspectives, different insights is helpful for us to look at these complicated issues in very different ways. Um, and so I really enjoyed this cohort model and um, I also get 45 friends out of it, you know, that's going to build my network and, and I'm really excited to see um, where we all end up in the future. <laughs>